Have mercy on me, O God, for people assail me. They fight me all day long and oppress me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the kingdom of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Just a warning to the parents here. This is a, the reading today are PG-13 rated, so uh, keep that in mind. And as we begin our celebration, we prepare ourselves to meet God in word and sacrament. We look at our daily lives, looking for moments of grace and offer God thanksgiving for his blessings. We seek God's forgiveness for those moments when we have been sinners. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to cause sinners to redemption. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former way to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Be seated, listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. The assembly condemned Susanna to death, but Susanna cried aloud, O oh, eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer as she was being led to execution. God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, what is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel, the elders said, come, sit with us and inform us, since God had given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, separate these two far from each other that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, how you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent and freeing the guilty. Although the Lord says the innocent and the just, you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a nastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you also your head. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two, so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, blessing God who saved those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words, Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. The response is, even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. 
Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff, it gives me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion, that he may live. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the mo morning he arrived again in the temple area. And all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her to stand in the middle. They said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. We have two ancient courtroom scenes in our, our readings today. The first one from the book of Daniel. Um, uh, is, uh, Daniel is playing the part of uh, two parts, really. He's Susanna's defense attorney, but he's also the prosecuting attorney for the two, uh, two elders who falsely accused her. Um, she was innocent of, of what, was they, what they accused her of. Um, they had snuck in. Uh, seeking to take advantage of her uh, in the garden when she was bathing. Um, and when she refused to give in to their demand, they claimed that uh, she had uh, a lover come in and, and that they, uh, they committed uh, the infidelity um, uh, there and that these two were witnesses to it. And so uh, their idea was to prevent her from squealing on them, they'd, they'd have her condemned first. And indeed, she was condemned with their, their testimony. These were two prominent people in the community, but, but the, her prayer was heard by God, and he inspired Daniel, who was just who was young at the time, described as a boy, probably a teenager, probably by the age of one of our high school students here, who cried out, the people aren't going to let this happen. I mean, no one's asked her anything that You've, you haven't done a proper investigation. And they all go flowing, running back to uh, where they, they had held the, the uh, mockery of the trial. And, uh, and he does something that uh, investigators do to this day. I mean, if you watch NCIS, it's one that gives rules. Never let two suspects be in the same room together. You separate them so that you can get their 
testimony and, and have them condemn themselves but with falsehoods. Indeed, that's what they do here. They said, we saw her under the tree, says, which tree? One says a mastic, the other says an oak. Uh, they're not easily uh, confused for each other. A mastic tree is not very tall, an oak is very large. Um, and uh, you see, by your own words, you've, you've been condemned. And, uh, uh, so we have uh, an innocent woman set free and the guilty parties punished. And then in our gospel today, we have Jesus uh, with a similar case. Um, a woman caught in infidelity um, brought, brought before him. She was caught in the very act. Uh, they dragged her out. She probably only had a sheet wrapped around her when they, they dragged her there. And they said, and she, we caught her in the very act. Uh, you know, it's just uh, in, in the law of Moses. Um, he commanded that, that she be put to death. What do you say? Uh, uh, this was one of those double-edged swords that uh, uh, they were always trying to get him with. Um, if he said, well, follow the law, their, their argument would be, have you no mercy? Have you no compassion or human weakness? If he said, let her go, they'd say, you throw the law out. Uh, it was one that uh, they were sure he could not um, find an answer that would get him out, but, uh, but he does. He gives a very simple statement. He said, uh, let the one who is out sin cast the first stone. And uh, none of them were foolish enough to stand up in public and say, I have never sinned. Um, that would be blasphemy. Everyone else they would start tearing their garments. Um, uh, and uh, it said that you know he was uh, squatting down and, and writing in the, the the dirt with his finger. And some of the commentators have said what he was writing was he was writing out the sins of the people who were accusing this woman. Um, but uh, God knows. Um, but uh, one by one they drift away, and then just the two of them are left there. And he said, "Nobody's condemned him. There's no one, sir." Um, you know, she she comes this close to being being killed, and and then he utters words that she never thought she would hear. He says, oh, "I don't condemn you either." And then he says, uh, "Go and sin no more." Um, and uh, in doing so, he gives us, in a nutshell, what what we've been working on uh, going into five weeks now of Lent. Um, whatever it is that we have done wrong in our lives, whatever sins that are there, God's preference is to forgive. Uh, God's preference is to, to renew the covenant with us. And it's the, that new covenant, uh, the covenant of love. Uh, the law is there to help us to love, but when we violate that, uh, he, uh, he calls upon love again um, and, and uh, forgives us our sins uh, and tells us, go forth and sin no more. Um, and that's, uh, that's happy news after spending so much time focusing on, on our shortcomings uh, to come to the realization of just how deep God's love is for us uh, as we come to the brink of finding out uh, the fullest extent of it as we get to the passion. Scatter our prayers and bring them before our God. Let's begin by praying for peace in our world. Ask that God send his spirit of peace to the minds and hearts of all men and women. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for the church in gratitude for God's word and God's sacraments, God's forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Pray for our nation. We ask that God watch over it, that he enlighten our leaders uh, with his wisdom. We pray to the Lord. Pray for our ministry of Catholic education, the ministry begun by the Holy Family, continuing through the ages and ongoing here at St. Francis. We pray to the Lord. We pray for an increase in vocations to the consecrated life and the priesthood. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our students who are in the RCIA program as they approach 
uh, the moment when they join us on the way, we pray to the Lord for your intention. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> Loving God, we come before you, bringing your hopes and desires. This year we've given voice, so there's no hope silently in our hearts, but all of them we offer to you, to be your Son, Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For the earth, the work of human hands, will come for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For the mind, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual strength. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance, the joyful purity of heart. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim, Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fault of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, the fast year of resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jeffrey, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, your blessed apostle, glorious martyrs, St. Francis, St. Clair, and all the saints that please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior is commanded and formed by divine teaching. To raise our voices in the prayer given to the church by Jesus himself. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a greeting of God's peace. Lamb of God. We hold the Lamb of God, we hold him who takes away this world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb, Lord, and not my Has no one condemned you, woman? No one, Lord. Neither shall I condemn you. From now on, sin no more. Let us pray. Amen. Amen. 
Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. That free from their sins, O Lord, we pray that people who call upon you, that living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace.